So bullying can be physical, verbal, or relational. Physical bullying, well, you deal with that every day. It's biting, but not at 18 months. It's biting at three, four, and five. Hitting, punching, spitting. Um, pinching is a really interesting one. It's a little bit invisible. Have any of you dealt with pinching? Yeah. You can, pinching is something very often that is a plot, that is done intentionally. Um, verbal puts downs, name calling, taunts, shouting, cursing, swearing. These are ways that children can verbally bully. But not every child who gives you a mouthful and shouts is a bully. It's more often the child who is tired, potentially hungry, running on empty emotionally, and frustrated to the max. That's a child who needs a hug, not a shrug. So those are the kinds of um, developmental things that we always need to think of when a child does something horrible. You know, the first thing you need to think about is, is this child exhausted? Did this child come to me today without sleep? Maybe there was trouble at home. Did this child start out with breakfast? Is this child got a fever? Is this child feeling sick? So when we sort of ask ourselves some questions about the particular child in the moment, and you have um, pretty good experience of children by the time it gets to even this point of the year, you already know which children are in trouble at home. And you are the oasis, but you're going to get all the bad behavior. Because children wear their pain in their behavior. So a child who's worried that daddy's going to hurt mommy, or that daddy doesn't have a job, or that mommy's crying at home because she's worried about something and you don't know what she's worried about and you can't fix it because you're four years old. So children bring the lens of um, the pain in families to you. And very often, that's open, very often um, you are the one who can acknowledge that child's presence and accept. You don't have to know what's going on, it's not our business, but if you accept the child emotionally for how they're feeling, that's all that child needs. You know, our friends in adult life, we always ask them for advice. <coughs> we ask for advice to confer what we already have decided to do. Right? But the function of friendship is that you can tell your friend how you're feeling, and your friend will get you. Well, early childhood educators have that friend function for children, that they feel safe to tell you. But you first of all have to understand that they're asking you, because they never ask for help in words. It might be they're biting. It might be something terrible, but you have the capacity to interpret acts that are not socially acceptable in the lens of this child is communicating something, what is going on for this child. So all of the discussions about bullying with older children, particularly high school children, none of them come from that position. But everything we talk about with young children should start there. That the child is their feelings. That's, who, that's actually who we all are. It's not our degrees. It's not our position. It's not the car we drive. It's how we feel. So for little children to bear in mind that they're just at the beginning of a very long journey and they're completely vulnerable completely. They have no control in their lives. So when children abuse power, we got to see what power are they lacking. 
we got to see how can we may give them legitimate power because they feel the need to create power to feel important. So um, the relational, that's the worst. Now when you look at this, and I hate talking about gender, because um, most studies, they start out with a pre preconceived idea of wanting to show how we're all different by gender. And I start out by saying we're all human. And actually just being born human doesn't mean we're humane. That's your job. And that's a family's job. To make sure that every little child in our care is learning from you in relationship with you by your modeling how to be humane, how to be empathic. So the relational stuff is typically attributed to little girls. And actually, if you think developmentally, little girls, here again, I hate to do the gender thing, but this is the truth, tend to have more sophisticated social and emotional skills than little boys, on balance. And I think if you look back to it, it evens out. But if you look back to it, just like they have superior fine motor skills, which even out by eight, just like they typically have better neurological coordination, evens out at eight. Um, little girls have, by virtue of the way they play, what they put their time to, the experience they have, they have more cumulative experience with playing using language and um, social and emotional role play. The number of little girls who are going to be Elsa for Halloween, <laughs> what does it appeal to? Why do the boys not want to be Elsa? There's no male figure in that film which has taken us by storm. But the idea that if you look at development and you look at gender, and you look at behavior, this whole thing of relational bullying. <clears throat> little children, have, little girls, have more experience of knowing what it feels like to be left out. So they sometimes will use that as a tool if they need to be powerful. Little boys tend, on average, to assert themselves physically or verbally. Now you all know little girls who are the exception, and you all know little boys who are the exception, but if you're speaking to parents, which you are all the time, it's sometimes very reassuring to be able to say, it's not unusual that little boys assert themselves with volume and physical vigor. But it is important that we respond authoritatively. So you don't want parents thinking they've got Jack the Ripper growing up, you know? But I can tell you that any child who takes pleasure in hurting someone is at serious risk of sociopathology. Any child who hurts animals willfully and gleefully, we got to clinically get that child seen. Those are the only two riders that I say, um, you know, I'm not dismissing in, in any way the seriousness of bullying in the preschool years because it is um, usually displayed as aggression and aggression is the gateway to poor mental health and um, aggression in preschool years is one of the, the best predictors of bullying later on. Victims of bullying in the early years, very good predictor of bullying later on. In terms of looking at relational bullying, the whole idea of rumors. You know, we know with the cyberspace story, and there is a slide there on cyberspace, cyberbullying. Um, the rumors that go on in cyberbullying literally make children take their lives. But the, the equivalent in little children is, she's got the cooties. 
and start, you don't play with her, she's got the cooties. It's exclusion. Exclusion is hugely painful. So the intention of the child who says, don't play with her, she's got the cooties, may not be evil. It may just take you saying to that little child, how would you feel if the children said to you, again a you thing, that she's got the cooties? And not to do it in the minute, because when a child is being singled out because they've been mean, it's generally because they've been mean, um, their cortisol level is high. The minute you come to address it, their stress level goes up. And when our stress level goes up, our learning goes down. Just like your brain is flooded, your heart is pounding, you kind of know you're caught, you're thinking defensively, and when children think defensively, some children get aggressive. Do you not know adults mm -hmm. when you say, you were late with that report. What do you mean I was late with that report? You, you know what I've got on my plate. <laughs> that kind of thing. We typically protect ourselves and some people by being aggressive and some people who are very secure in themselves say, yep, yeah, things got out of control. Rather than being aggressive. When children feel aggressive, they usually act aggressively. So...